and welcome to Get to the Gritty with Louise and Rachel. On today's show, we're discussing an issue that is becoming a greater concern in society. That is the increase in sexual behaviour in adolescents, specifically younger teens. Today's show aims to deconstruct the issue in terms of social constructions of men and women that are fed to young adolescents on a daily basis, and that in turn shape the person our young teens aspire to act like and look like. We are attempting to outline different versus dominant views of the issue and look at diversity. Day after day, teenagers are being bombarded with images and behaviours that create points of reference for each individual to compare themselves with. If you consider this and all that is unsaid in an advertisement, it becomes clear as to why there is an increase in sexual behaviour amongst teens. Images used for advertising in magazines create the concept of a dominant reference point for both boys and girls alike. When teens see celebrities, they recognise or are exposed when to what is generated by the company as normal behaviour, they place these interpretations as the dominant and accepted view in society, and in turn place themselves in the zone of difference because they are not the same. They are different, but difference is a curse in adolescence, and so many teens take this dominant view as gospel for how they should act and how they should look, and therefore strive to become a part of this dominant society. Difference is a concept that describes something that deviates from the dominant perspective. This means we have two points of reference, the dominant and the different. The dominant perspective is one that is upheld by the majority. What does this mean in terms of increased sexual behaviour in teens? In advertisements, we see many of the dominant men and women demonstrating very sexualised behaviour in terms of their physical appearance and in some cases their personal lives of the dominant figure. All to create desire for the product which claims to bring the mere mortal closer to the scenario of life of the dominant figures. This is dangerous for teen self-esteem. Let's look at an example from a popular magazine, Men's Health, which is enjoyed by both adolescent and adult men. In the Calvin Klein Euphoria ad, the dominant man and woman are in an intimate position. His shirt is opened, hinting at a toned figure. The woman's slim body is, an enca is encased in a silky sheet, implying she is naked underneath. One might take away from this advertisement that to be desired, one needs to look like the models and behave as they do. They may also feel they need to wear the fragrance advertised to help them in their quest. After viewing such images, the teen may realise that the magazine has labelled them as different. This alienation from the dominant and ideal presented in the advertisement is confronting for the teen who, with the burning need to feel accepted by their peers, chooses to adopt the behaviours and looks of their magazine idols and participate in the sexualised behaviour of the advertisements that they imply happened. Someone who is different recognises the dominant view and chooses not to partake in the sexualised behaviour of their peers. This takes an immense amount of courage for an adolescent to be the odd one out, and too often a teen gives into social pressure. This is why teaching of, the teaching of diversity and acceptance are essential requirements in every child's education. In an everyday classroom, difference and dominance exist mutually, and it is imperative that this is brought to everyone's attention. The quest is to realise that nobody's belief is wrong. As two people who have been through adolescence, no matter how many times you tell a teen to be themselves, they won't because belonging is a crucial part of their life. They subscribe to the collective identities developed by their peers. These identities that are produced and taken on are a real part of a teen's emerging social identity. When young teens create collective identities of how they, as a male or female, should look and behave, using magazines as a guide, their own social identities are being polluted. This may mean that with the pressures to belong to and conform to the sexualised behaviours, teens may not unlock their true character and identity. Thus, it is important to equip teens with the media skills they need so they can navigate these images that they're bombarded with day after day and use that information to create new collective identities for themselves and their peers. This message is what a local teacher, Miss M, took on board in order to answer a question submitted by one of our viewers. Hi Heather, if you're watching. Heather's question was, are teachers doing anything to help? Excellent question, Heather. Miss M writes that her teaching material aims to teach her students tolerance and respect for each individual's values and beliefs 
in the hope that they will apply this knowledge when facing tough decisions in the future. Tolerance, she defines as the appreciation of diversity and the ability to live and let others live. Miss M wants to work with her students to appreciate the diverse nature of their classroom. Here at Get to the Gritty, we're encouraging students to develop their own views on the issue of sexual behaviour and to stick to their beliefs without compromising or falling for the pressure delivered by peers and the media. Live and let others live and respect their decisions. Rachel recently visited Miss M to discuss her teaching material, didn't you Rachel? I sure did Louise and I think she's got some great ideas. So, Miss M, tell me about how you've been dealing with the issue of social constructions in your class and what year level do you teach? I'm a Year 7 teacher. We've been studying different media forms this term and at the moment we're doing magazines, so this issue fits in nicely. While I'm not tackling the issue of sexual behaviour in my class directly, I want to equip my students with the ability to make their own decisions, even under pressure from their peers when they transition to high school next year. Do you think this issue is gender specific? Everyone suffers from self-esteem issues. Mm. Unfortunately for boys, there aren't as many resources for them in this department. So I'm hoping they'll benefit from the activities I've got planned. So, Miss M, the burning question on everybody's lips. Just how are you going to do this? Firstly, I've been implementing a three-step rule for tolerance in my classroom. I call it the SOR rule. S is for speak up when you have a different opinion. O is for own choice to participate or not, and R is for respect when somebody says no. The SOR rule has a nice ring to it. How about those activities? I like to start with an icebreaker game that focuses their minds on the topic at hand. I call it similarities and differences. <sighs> to start with, everyone sits in a circle. I stand in the centre to start. The first few rounds we focus on similarities. I might say, stand up if you have blue eyes. Mm -hmm. And then all the people with blue eyes stand up and change places, like musical chairs. Mm -hmm. Then there's a new person in the centre and they ask a new question. After a few rounds, the game changes to differences where the statement ends with something they haven't experienced. Great game! Everyone takes away new knowledge about their classmates as well. That's right, Rachel. My next activity deals with magazines specifically. Divide the class into groups. Give one half a large outline of a person and show them a series of magazine advertisements to prompt their thinking for the activity. The task here is to think about the ideal man or woman, a woman that we see in the media. Write down what they look like, what they like doing, how they act, and any celebrities that the group feels fit the bill. The point here is to identify what the media thinks we should be. To the other groups, give each student a small outline, like this and ask them to write down the qualities they think an ideal man or woman has. When finished, swap over. To avoid students repeating the same information, I like to swap genders as well. So the girls doing the qualities of the ideal woman are now doing the media image of the ideal man. I like to keep my students on their toes. To finish, I'll discuss the similarities and differences with them, along with the focus questions of which one do you want to be? Is there a right answer? Why do, you, why do we think this about these men and women in the media? I really like the way you've dealt with that, Miss M. Those are some great focus questions. What other activities have you got planned for your magazine unit? Well, Rachel, I have one more activity that deals with tolerance before I turn my attention to making magazine covers. I'd like each student to ask an adult they know about the social pressures they felt when they were a teen. For example, was it important to have a flashy car or be in a relationship? From this information, the student then fills out a Venn diagram, sort of like this one here, combining the issues they face with the issues of their adult. In class, we'll, d we'll discuss informally how one could cope with the most common issues. Fantastic, Miss M. You've planted the seed of looking for help early on. Thank you for your time today and I hope your students enjoy the rest of your magazine unit. Thank you, Rachel. Wow, Rachel, those are some really great activities. Miss M really believes that it's important to equip teens with media skills so that they can navigate all those images they're bombarded with day after day. That's right, Louise. So, students, develop your own views about the issue of sexual behaviour and stick to your guns when it comes to social pressure. Remember Miss M's SOR rule, speak up, 
own choice and respect. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining us on Get to the Gritty. Tune in next week when we discuss cyberbullying.